What's up guys, we're going to be taking a look at this lab, information disclosure in version control history. When we think of version control, we think of Git version control. It's a way of storing your code and progressively tracking all of the changes you make at different points in time, referred to as commits. And if you need to roll back to any specific commit, you'll be able to do that with version control. The way that Git works is that you will have a hidden Git folder within your code base. So you have your web app code and within that folder, you'll have a hidden .git folder. Now the basic idea is you're not supposed to be able to access that. So if I were to head to a web app and try and navigate directly to the .git folder, it shouldn't let me do that. The reason why this is a security vulnerability is not can I only access the full code base right now, but I can actually access previous code as well and previous commits that could be problematic as we're going to see. So if you are running a web server and you realize that you can access .git, then depending on which web server you're using, you need to configure it so that access to this directory is not allowed. Or if you're using some kind of routing framework, you'll hopefully find that you can't access .git by default anyway, because everything goes through, let's say the same index.php file first anyway. Now, if we download the contents of this .git folder, so we'll just copy the URL, we'll actually be able to browse this locally, making use of Git. Let's take a look at how that works. So we are in an empty documents folder. We can make use of wget, which is really a download utility. Dash R for recursive, it means it's going to crawl each of the folders. And we're simply going to provide that link to the .git folder. So we can see it's pulled everything from that link. If we have a look at the contents of our current directory. We can see our Git folder. Let's CD into this and we can now actually make use of Git commands from within this folder. So if I type Git log, I can actually see the history of different commits. And you can see that each of these commits has a specific hash. So for example, we have the first commit along with the hash and then we have a note that's been placed there by the developer, add skeleton admin panel. And then we see a second commit, remove admin password from config. Now that's obviously super interesting. So what are we reading here? That there was a config file that had the admin password hard coded. Developer realized it was a mistake, removed the admin password from the config file and then pushed the update in a second commit. But the thing is we have access to version control now so we can actually just recover the earlier commit and have access to those files. Simple way of doing that is simply by making use of the command git checkout and then providing the hash of the commit that we want to recover. So let's copy that, git checkout, followed by the hash. Now, if we run ls, we can see that there is an admin.conf file here. Let's cap that to the screen. Admin password equals, followed by the admin password. Now, just to compare, if we run git checkout and we provide the hash of the most recent commit. Now let's run an ls, let's cap the admin.conf. And we can see, sure enough, in the more recent version of the file, admin password equals, and that password has been replaced by an environment variable. So the developer has switched from a hard-coded password to one that's taken from something like a .env file. So that's obviously good security practice. The problem is if we have access to the Git folder, we are simply able to roll back and access previous versions of files. So it's obviously extremely important that if someone is not a developer, if they're just an end user, that they can't access your .git directory. That is for developers only. So returning to the lab description, we can see that we need to obtain the password for administrator, then log in and delete the user, Carlos. So let's try to log in as administrator. Let's paste the password from the clipboard, choose login. We're now logged in as administrator. We need to head to admin panel and delete the user, Carlos. And we get the flag. Congratulations, you solved the lap. Okay, so key takeaways here is make sure your .git directory is not exposed to the end user. And for the attacker, it's something that you could check for because if you have access to this, there's a good chance you're going to be able to access information that you're not really supposed to be able to access. All right, hope it was helpful. Thanks for checking out the content and I'll catch you guys in the next lap.